What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little pass is a business. A dead meat. First, he swings Azrael around and breaks his back over his knee, which is one of the most Monday Night Raw moves Jason has ever done. You can't really talk shit about this show, because what other family sitcom featured a guest spot from my favorite wrestler of all time, Mick freaking Foley? Where am I? He tries to impress her with a Polaroid of a guy he killed. Dude just looks like mankind to me. Have a nice day! He's not wearing people face masks just yet. He does have that mankind muzzle. Have a nice day! Dol Machete for Lamest Kill has plenty of options, but the second death of this movie was a mercenary being thrown into a table. What kind of horseshit is that? Mick Foley would be ashamed. The criminal is known only in the credits as The Man, even though he don't look like Becky Lynch to me. The Man! Becky Lynch! Also, Creighton clotheslines his way to freedom. Turns out, this isn't a reflection at all. Yowie wowie. Yowie wowie. I am seriously impressed by how believable they all look. I mean, yowzers wowzers. Yowie wowie. The divers approach the orca, which is resting near a kelp forest, then pull up their pants and do the muscle man dance by its wreckage. And pull up your pants and do the muscle man dance. Alan eventually corners Sarah in the opera room, where he bangs on his chest and invites her to be his guest at the Finestone Funhouse. At the end, this is the Firefly Funhouse! <laughs> his research partner, Jake, ribs him from the surface with a pre-2010 Kofi Kingston accent. Will you stop farting around? Move your eyes, man! My name is Kofi Kingston. Looks like there's some trouble in paradise. We've got to come together and get on the same page, because if we don't, it's gonna be bad news for all of us. Hold on a second, I got a question. Matter of fact, I got a problem. Aren't you supposed to be Jamaican? What happened to your accent? Adam smokes it and gives a very poor performance of a man being poisoned to death. So unconvincing that he gets heckled in the form of a shock through the ankle chain that makes him break kayfabe. This is, I think we're deviating from the, from the norm here. Deviating from the script, I hesitate to say that, but what the hell is going on? Is this your deal, Russo? Wow. That's, That's why this company's in the damn shape it's in, because of bullshit like this. My God, this is real life. One, two, three. Good God almighty, are we gonna have some splendid to do tomorrow? Freddy, dressed as Michael Myers, comes out of the shadows and attacks Sarah. But after Jim comes out of nowhere and knocks him down, Freddy breaks kayfabe and tells them all to turn off the cameras. There's one thing you're better at than I am, and that's kissing Vince McMahon's ass. You're as good as kissing Vince's ass as Hulk Hogan was. I don't know if you're as good as Dwayne, though he's a pretty good ass kisser. Always was and still is. Oops, I'm breaking the fourth wall. Oh look, it's Linda from Evil Dead 2. And Zombie Ultimate Warrior? What? The Ultimate Warrior! The dude in the scene is the writer of this movie. Yeah, that stone cold looking mother trucker right there. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass! Fifield, that Seamus looking geologist back there. She Origins was made by WWE Studios and stars one of its wrestlers, Dylan Postel, better known as Hornswoggle, as the Leprechaun. He's back! Hey, it's the former anonymous Raw General Manager! Uh, it's Hornswoggle! Hornswoggle's here! Michael Myers has grown into a mountain of a man, played by former pro wrestler Tyler Mayne. There's seven foot tall, 308 pound, sky high Lee. We finally get some of the Alien vs. Predator fight that was promised in the title, even if it does get a little pro wrestling, when Celtic swings the Xenomorph around by its leg. Impossible! You ought to be kidding me! Oh my god! Oh my god! That is the most amazing feat of strength I think I've ever seen! Look at this! Oh Look god. at this! Oh this is incredible! Uber Jason's first act is to decapitate KM, who's still functional as just the head, leaving Sonaran looking like Al Snow for the rest of the movie. Bring the company by head! 
His buddy Billy is fucking pumped for Thanksgiving break. He's doing a Hulk Hogan impression there. Hulk Hogan! I used to do backyard wrestling when I was a kid, and just looking at this fall reminds me of all the times I got real scared someone had broken their neck. In between them is a hooded figure who's revealed to be... Wait, by God, that's John Kramer's music! Wait a minute! It's the Warriors music! Jeremiah tries to tell Red that he can't harm him because he's imbued with holy power. He's the Mandy Night Messiah, mofo! I am the Monday Night Messiah! You belong to the Mordeo now. And the Honky Tonk Man is right. The Honky Tonk Man! Jason chases her around a bunch. She goes WWE on him. By God! Tommy raged out and beat up Junior. Not only with some solid punches, but also a fucking leg drop. Look at that. By God! He's attacked by Henry Bowers, who he slams through a table. By God! Mac Daddy gets back up and takes a chair to Lep's head. Fuck off! Oh, oh my god! But wait, he's not done yet. Oh, from the top turnbuckle, it's a flying leprechaun! I didn't know. Oh, no no way! way! The tip! The tag pole splash! That aerial maneuver almost gives him the win, but oh my god, is that Rory's music? It is! And he's there with a drive by batting. Oh, it's a signature move. Because of the burning book, Scotty's too hottie. Scotty! Friday the 13th is the undisputed body count champion of the genre. Undisputed WWE heavyweight champion of the world! Half of him is all deformed and the other half looks like Hillbilly Jim. Oh boy. Hillbilly Jim! He can also bust a fool if need be. My God, that man had a family. Come on, he's got a family. Oh my God! With the Tyrannosaurus Rex as the indisputable fan favorite, you might expect him to win the match easily. But JP3 is trying to put the Spinosaurus over, so the newcomer snaps into the Rex's neck and puts him down with a nasty snap, solidifying its role as the top heel in the film and roaring out a challenge. Come at me, motherfucker! Spino's in the house! After a couple of horny teens on a spaceship have sex, their climaxes wake Jason up in a very Undertaker-esque way. <laughs> So he goes out there and opens up a can of whoop ass. Stone Cold Steve Austin came out here to Jones Bar and opened up a can of whoop ass. Out of a sense of rejection, he cracks open a little bit of the bubbly. What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. How many mother shunters got killed in society? Let's find out and get to the numbers. Right after I crack open a little bit of the bubbly. Oh, getting ready to have a little bit of the bubbly. Leo shoots them all to death after getting some solid assistance from Charlie with a flaming 2x4? What is this, the ECW? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Watch out! Oh my god! Oh my god! This massive oversight nearly gets Darla caught by the cops in line behind her, which include Deborah Marshall, aka Deborah, aka the one-time wife of Stone Cold Steve Austin and a valet in the WWF. Apparently, she tried acting for a little while before having the misfortune of being a woman on the roster during the Attitude Era. Well, well, well it's the big show. And don't look now, upturned mower, but thanks to the return of those alien whisper voices, you about to get these hands. You're gonna get these hands. After that, Jason tracks down the nurse and choke slams her against the wall. <laughs> Choke slam! What you about to do here? Get fucking choke slammed, apparently. Yeah! Oh, a choke slam! Although Big Lou gets out a small gun, it doesn't deter Michael from walking up and landing another choke slam. And Kane with a choke slam to Sada! Where in no time at all, Michael appears to choke slam her onto some farm equipment. They're doing it! The choke slam! Oh, oh my god! we get a fight with a couple of nice pro wrestling beats to it. First, Kyle hits the big man with a friggin' chair, and then Jason comes back with an Undertaker slash Kane style choke slam through a table. Choke slam through a table! By God, this ain't a TLC match. In a TLC match, tables know. and ladders and oh. chairs. Oh, no. oh my! Getting scared by Chainsaw Guys, Cyberpunk Skeksis, and Darby Allen on stilts. Derby! This glorious, gleaming battle axe glaive is called the Beast, Brock Lesnar style. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me at this time, Brock Lesnar. I'm the Beast! With Jason unconscious, he finds Freddy in Dreamland and they face off in a boiler room, which was probably a matchup in a WWE pay-per-view at some point. 
With Jason unconscious, he finds Freddy in Dreamland, and they have a Mankind vs. Undertaker style boiler room brawl. SummerSlam 96, y'all! Where a big ol' Freddy worm busts out of the floor and friggin' body slams her to the ground. Do you think that could be it? In yeah. the body slam! She breaks the walls down, Chris Jericho style. And his mom's been getting her grind on with a douchebag named Shane. Ugh, Shane. I bet he thinks he's the best in the world. The best in the world! Unfortunately for Bev, before he can be her blue collar solid hero, we're doing the blue collar solid thing. While the demon reverts back into Finn Balor, or the evil kid. The demon, Finn Balor's alter ego, is here. And don't act so slow motion surprised, you fools. You knew that fucker was out there. <laughs> Oh, ho, 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 but not that it'd do that. Wow, a killer great white is one thing, but now we're dealing with Stone Cold Steve Sharkston? <laughs> by God! Her attempts at signaling the others are ignored and turned off by one Carter J. Burke, who at this point has completed a full heel turn. How about a little heel turn? She demands that David remove the fetus, but he refuses and drugs her instead, cause David's no longer a tweener. He's a full on heel, motherfuckers. Haha, <laughs> this fucker looks like he'd be a member of the brood. There's one word to describe this trio, and that's unique. I thought it was brood. The now flaming mutant to jump off the top rope and crack his helmet open with a body slam. Freddy and Jason go at it again, this time in the film's main event. This is the main event! He of course looks back at his axe-ridden foe to see the undead man-child is still ready to rumble. Uh, let's get her ready to rumble! <laughs> she calls Jason out of his hiding spot so they can get the heck out of this house before that creepy Lucha kid and his raspy-voiced mom come and get him. Lucha House Party! When the kids hear them a-coming, they start to arm themselves, pulling weapons out like they're going under the ring in a wrestling video game. Or maybe over the crowd barricade, whichever simile works for you. Ricky tells the doc that back when he was an American badass on a motorcycle, and so, one American badass clothesline later, the American badass. M134 minigun that Blaine is walking around with, a weapon that's usually mounted on a helicopter, but in this case, it's just mounted onto Jesse Ventura's 6'4", 250 pound body frame. 278 pounds, Jesse the Body Ventura. They wrestle around for a while, and Aaron tries to help, but Leatherface wins the handicap match and pins Morgan up on a spiky chandelier. The Butcher's blood splashes onto a news story about some missing Mohawk scouts, but talk about false advertising, there ain't even a faux hawk among the lot of them. I was really hoping to see a troop of Girl Scouts running around with Mr. T and Seamus hairstyles. Ash and Henrietta have their wrestling match, complete with elbow blows and Henrietta selling some great heel rage. And now that adrenaline is flowing heavy through the body of the Hunster. And he is ignoring those big right hands. But that only results in Leatherface coming out and slitting Bailey's throat. Damn, I guess Bailey won't be giving any more hugs after that. Hi, AJ. Hi! I'm Bailey. Yeah, Jaws the Revenge just straight up ignores Jaws 3D. I wonder why they would do that. Oh, that's right. My god. But she's able to rest free enough to take it in her shoulder instead. And Grace is able to run out the clock enough to score a victory by countout. Here is your winner by countout! Karen finds Linda in the driver's seat of the Jeep, her head all wrapped up in barbed wire. That's just looking for Linda! What? Is that he still threatens her with sexual violence and pulls a Vince McMahon. You hurt me, Bart. <laughs> Super gross. Just like it was with Trish. We love you, Trish. Trish! Stratus! 
After a while, it looks like the Indominus has the match on lock, but as it goes for the pin, Blue's music starts playing, and the recently face-turned Velociraptor runs down the ramp and into the foray. He kicks Herbert West out of the school and rescinds Dan's student loans. Damn, I bet Dan thought he'd be safe by getting engaged to the boss's daughter, but I guess he didn't have any luck with that old Triple H strategy. Today we're looking at Santa Slay, a 2005 Christmas horror film that stars pro wrestling superstar Bill Goldberg as Santa Claus. This dude just killed so many people in only a minute, it's almost like he was a professional ass kicker or something. He breaks some more glass when Goldberg does his patented spear straight through Mr. Green's counter display. Goldberg, I got him with a spear! In a stunt that the man did himself. I mean, shouldn't be that surprising, dude's a pro wrestler. Mike hits Henry with a rock to get him off, then freaking Goldberg spears him into the well. And another spear by Goldberg! Oh, and also, there's a post credit scene where Goldberg gets to say his catchphrase. Who's next? Who's next? His gunner falls out and gets friggin' air speared by a Pteranodon. Oh my god! And for the 20-foot ladder with a spear on Jeff Hardy! Just a run and a jump, and boom! That guy's broken in half! Oh my god! That's not a spy witness! He is broken in half! We finally see Thomas's body after it falls in front of Raymond, and holy shit, that boy was literally broken and high off. Jeff Hardy may be broken, smack dab in half! Oh yeah, the shower cap that Stanley was never seen without. It was so ham, such good shit. I want to talk to Vince, I'm like, yo, uh, what, all this stuff, I can't say all this stuff, it's ridiculous, you know? And he's like, oh, it's such good shit, oh, this stuff. This is, a, this is the reason people like you, you know, it's why they connect you, because, you know, you're, you're different, and it's so, you know, this is you. And I've had a million conversations with him that are almost this exact same conversation about similar promos or things. You know, this is you, it's such good shit, this is what makes you, you. Also, heads up, I'm recording this after I got back from SummerSlam, and my voice is still kinda shot. Sorry, but that's bound to happen after you witness Seth Rollins frog splash Brock Lesnar through an announcer's table. And your eyes don't deceive you, that is in fact Chelsea and me back there, fist pumping our brains out. By God. Hey everybody, thanks a lot for watching what was easily the most difficult supercut I've ever assembled. There were close to 90 wrestling references in there, and this video wouldn't have been possible without the help of a lot of people who I want to thank right now. First off, the people who went through all the kill counts and counted up all the wrestling references I made, that include my former assistant Alex Otto and fans Peter Galloway and Aaron Kenny. And then there were just a ton of fans who hung out during the editing live streams and helped me find all the wrestling clips themselves. A ton of the work was done by, let's see here, we got Nick V, Teddy Holt, Max A. Pacheco, he did a ton, Tinkerer, Dead Nick, Jared Clark, comics and such, Josh Volkiev, Minka Brand, Ethan Kaufman, and Derek Chase. Those people helped put together a Google spreadsheet with all the dates that I had for the wrestling clips. Also thanks to moderator Sarah Damien for that. And finally, there were a ton of other people who emailed me clips to use, and that includes Francisco Martinez, Fernando Gonzalez, Check for Savage, Elsie Hex, Scott Coleman, Ezekiel Pena, Tyler Williams, Cody Hoff, Jay McFarland, Avenged Lovey, The Ozman 89, Carly Grace, William Nyborg, Crackshaw, Ricardo Aguila, Alex Payton, and Loyal Clown. Long list of names, but that's what it took to make this video happen, so I really hope you enjoyed it. And also thank you to Lucy. Thanks, Lucy. Alright, thanks for watching, everyone. Be good people.